Psalms 119 verses 105 For the entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. Join us as we dive into God's word, exploring its timeless possibilities and uncovering the relevance of God's word in today's world. We will discover its transformational power found within its pages. Somebody will leave this service tonight baptized with the spirit of prayer. Something will wake up on your inside. You will pray, you will pray, and you will pray again. If our propensities will be activated, there's only one location that will happen. It's on the altar. It's on the altar. Ask men who shake their word. They will tell you where they live. He said, Blessed is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that abides under the shadow of his arm of the Almighty. He said, That is the one that will say of his God, is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, is my shield and my buckler. Those are the men that speak as though they are gods on the face of the earth because they are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. They don't visit and go, they dwell there. They have power on the altar. These are the men that break protocols. These are the men that shift atmospheres. These are the men that open seasons and stare dimensions because they have a throne on the altar. Help those under the power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Sit down for a moment. Those under the power, just help them. You can keep them by the side. Let them just suck the atmosphere in. God sent me here tonight to trigger a hunger in your spirit. We have been carried away by the mundane. We think it is nakedness on the internet that is what fascinates the soul. There are things you will see and hear in the spirit. All your lifetime you will not recover from them. The beauty, the excellence, the power that they communicate. These are the things God has made available to us. And a generation must wake up to that reality. From the power of distraction and iniquity and step into the realms where the powers of the ages to come dwell. Romans 15 verse 4. I'll just give you a short exhortation. We are out of time. He said, for whatsoever, thank you so much. He said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, time. He said, they were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The things that were written were not written just to make us theological students. They were written to give us a hope that is beyond anything man can offer. They were written to trigger a hunger in our spirit, a desire, a passion that nothing of earth should be able to quench. And tonight, I want to show you the journey of the patriarchs. So that you will see the things that men of old have handled. What men have touched when the scriptures were not yet written. In fact, the quality of their work and encounters became the body of scriptures. I want to show you what men have handled when the Holy Ghost had not yet been given to tabernacle in men. Meanwhile, the Bible said, the glory of this age is Christ in you. The mystery of this age is Christ in you. He said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now, these are people who didn't have Christ in them. 
but the things they handled when you take time to meditate on these things you will pity your existence if it's the same heaven we are going to if it's the same god we are serving then we have not started living i will just show you four men that walk through this same earth who didn't have the advantage of the holy spirit who didn't have the advantage of scriptures yet wrought wonders and dimensions that even if you read today you will need the holy ghost to help you to believe and then you ask yourself what am i doing here why am i here you will ask yourself again what is the meaning of existence are these men like me calling on the name of the god that i claim to be my god some of them worked with god so much that they privatized god for a whole generation that for aeons god will be called the god of abraham because that was the only way god could be known in the whole world if you want to know who god is you better find out who is abraham and study his dealings because that's the only basis by which we know god how can a man be so mighty to have privatized god that god is known after his work with a man and we say we are christians all we have are suits auditoriums all we have are titles is it the same god that this man have we have no we don't know what we are doing a generation must rise that will challenge the status quo and tell yourself if god was faithful to people like this i must see that faithfulness because he himself said he is not biased he doesn't favor one over the other that means what you are is your choice it's not because god prioritize one over the other we have not made the right choices that's why we are where we are a generation must rise that will level up with what abraham moses and the prophets have done and represent it in this generation and much more until that generation rises we don't know why the holy ghost came he said the things that were written at four time they were written for our learning to teach us how to live because we may have come into this world and we are lost with human pursuits so we don't know how to live he said these things were written for our learning we need to be taught what life is about and how to exist on this side of the divide let me begin with abraham it's a life that powers the body if they take your blood sample they can give 100 percent information about you because the totality of your bodily being has its essence in the blood but that's not where you stop in Genesis 2 7 we see that there's another life in the soul called suke now these two kinds of life can function without God but there is a third life that cannot work apart from God that life God he did in the garden so that it is through intimacy that the man will find it so in Genesis 2 9 he said God planted trees in the garden and in the midst of the garden he planted the tree of life he expected the man to eat the tree of life so that he will become complete but the devil knew that something was coming that was bigger than him something was about to emerge that he could not handle if this man completes this cycle this metamorphosis i will become a he came and introduced the pathway of rebellion and when they lured the man into rebellion the man did not allow the process to be completed so every man after adam that walked the earth operated by two lives the soulish life and the bodily life because of that demons could manipulate him because of that nature could oppress him he was created to rule over nature that's why the lion could not imagine to attack Adam you, you can't imagine it because he's a god over that realm he ruled over the earth realm you can't dare the mosquitoes couldn't bite him his existence as a prince of heaven on earth was what kept the blueprint of earth in place it was when he fell that nature fell he said they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness he said i have said ye are gods because we are the children of the most High." he said but you will fall like one of the princes and he said the whole foundation of the earth is out of course so the reason nature fell was because the man fell his life was to control the visible realm but he didn't realize that he was a prince and so he allowed the devil to lure him into rebellion and every man began to function by soul and by body and because of that princes could rule men that's why the bible calls it an abomination he said when princes should ride on horses he said they are trekking why the princes that have fallen who are now beggars in the realm of god he said they are the ones riding horses so men were controlled by demons nature began to buffet man and because man became a slave of the aeon man naturally began to diminish because the outward man began to perish the outward man began to lose strength and essence and god looked upon the man and out of mercy he decided to create a restoration program 
and so the restoration program was for god to bring the life that he didn't take but you see he couldn't receive that life in iniquity so the first thing god had to do was to become man to take the pains and the judgment of man to qualify the man again to be able to receive that life and so in john 3 16 he said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so when christ came he came to deliver us from the judgment of sin and to reintroduce us into the economy of eternal life so whoever is in christ jesus the bible said he's a new creation all things are passed away behold all things have become new everybody who is in christ jesus is now a possessor of the three life that man is supposed to have spirit soul and body and i told you in the afternoon that what the holy ghost did was to secure the spirit of man because the process of spirit restoration is complete so in ephesians 1 13 the bible said the holy ghost sealed our spirits from corruption in ephesians 4 30 the holy ghost sealed our spirit from corruption but while we are yet joining on to rapture we will have to take responsibility by the word and by the spirit to secure the soul and the body it is in a bid to secure the soul and the body that transformation is necessary that transfiguration is necessary because only your spirit have been exclusively secured your soul and your body is not yet exclusively secured he said the lord had said unto abraham the first question you ask yourself is what language does god speak how was he able to decode the utterances of god how did he know it was god that was talking to him and the first thing god told him was not that i will give you a car he said get out of your country get out of your kindred get out of your father's house to the land that i will show you he has not even given you the name of the land he said it is dear i will bless you how was abraham able to believe a spirit that is not known and abandon everything to follow that spirit and as if that was not enough this same abraham walked with this god and it became normal for god to talk to abraham on every issue of life when it has to do with children god is talking to abraham when his wife takes a decision and he refuses god comes to talk to him as god the almighty became so great that the almighty was introduced after his work with abraham god was called the friend of abraham god a friend of a man who is that man god introduced as the friend of abraham who is that man and you up to today you are still hoping whether god knows you you are still thinking and hoping that god will talk to you on a matter you go to the place of prayer you don't even have assurance that god will speak yet a man without the holy ghost walked with god so closely that god introduced himself as his friend not just as his god but as his friend and abraham knew this god so intimately that his assurance in life was not predicated on his business acumen his assurance in life was predicated on his understanding of the faithfulness of god in genesis chapter 14 abraham heard that his brother lot was kidnapped not by thieves by four kings powerful kings they destroyed a nation and took the spoils of that nation and his brother unfortunately was included his nephew and abraham stood up and carried not an army 318 servants what a nation could not do abraham believed that his household could do that means the household of abraham was bigger than sodom and gomorrah the household of abraham was bigger than the four kings put together they tell you that four nations gang up against a nation is that a nation to rise up against they just fought a battle their morale is high but abraham came out from a gate of mystery he said he took 318 train servant and hear what abraham did the bible said abraham divided himself among them you know that technology how did he know that one man can be divided into 318 men now the people who translated the bible later they could not understand that phrase so what they did was that they said abraham shared his company that's not what the bible said the bible said abraham divided himself because there's a technology abraham understood in the spirit that is possible for one man to be in many locations so what you call by location today abraham knew it before the holy ghost came abraham splitted himself 
and when Abraham splitted himself, he knew that those people were in trouble. You know why? Because God had already told him, I will make you a great nation. So Abraham knew he was a nation. So when Abraham took 318 men and splitted himself into them, they stopped being men. They became 319 nations. So the battle was no longer men versus nation. The battle was 319 nations against four nations. That's why there was no casualty in that war. When Abraham came back, nobody died. And the spoils of war, the kings of Sodom offered it to him. He said, I will not take it. I have more than enough. If I take even a large check from you, you will go and say you made Abraham rich. So the guy was sure of his prosperity as an individual in a strange land. When Abraham wanted a burial ground, they said, we will dash you. You are a blessing to us. He said, don't dash me. I don't want you to come tomorrow and hold my children to ransom because I know they will be great. What kind of audacity is that? Meanwhile, you, you are praying here that God should give you a promotion. And because promotion has not come for one year, you are frustrated and you are about to fall from Christianity. Whereas there is another man without scriptures, without the Holy Ghost. He's so sure of tomorrow that a king wanted to favor him. He said, I don't need it. I don't want you to come and say you are the one who made me rich. A man was so sure of tomorrow that they wanted to dash him a property. As I came to Ghana now, if they tell me there's a piece of land here we want to give you, I will need that and say thank you. Not Abraham. They gave him a land. They say I don't need it. I can pay for it. I have the capacity. My God is faithful to me. Why do you find Christian beggars? It's because even with the Holy Ghost, even with Scripture, they have not known the faithfulness of God. So the guy needs to become part of free medicine in order to win an election and he sells his soul becomes occultic because he wants to win a counselor position what a shame you need to go back and find out what did abraham know what did abraham touch that even kings could not be a privilege for him meeting a king was not a privilege for him what did he know and we say we have the holy ghost today we are parading king palaces and government houses begging for favor we that carry the holy ghost and you'll find many people corrupt their bishopric many people corrupt their ordination just because they need a little favor from somebody who is in governmental power what a shame the bible i read he didn't say the king will sustain us he said the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder we represent him we carry the government you know why revival needs to come because god needs to strengthen his works in the nation we have allowed the work of the Lord to be blasphemed because we don't know the one that we are serving. Go to the government house tomorrow. See the number of prophets who are there lying and begging. It will be a shame to call yourself a Christian with that activity. Begging and lying. Even the mayors, the governors, the prime ministers, they know that these people is hunger that want to kill them. And they can lie because of food. But because we've not had the Abraham, Abrahamic encounters, where a king offers you the spoil, you say, keep it. My, my promotion does not come from the east. It does not come from the south. It does not come from the north. It comes from the Lord. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm not saying there's anything wrong in you being blessed, but I'm saying you will not put your Christianity on the line to receive something mundane. You have so much audacity in God that you know that your tomorrow is secured. He said, don't behave like the pagans who pursue everything. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said, all these things that the pagans seek, it shall be added unto you. But we have a generation that have perverted scripture. So a bishop can go and lie against another bishop in order to receive favor before a mayor. A mayor that you need down for him to pray for. This is why we cry for revival. Genuine men will rise again. Let me show you more. Please sit down. When I read the scripture, sometimes I weep. First, from the bankruptcy of God in my life. And then secondly, from the bankruptcy of God in my generation. And I ask myself, how was I trained? Is it the same God that this man walk with, that I'm working with now? Then the president makes demand of you. You will not have authority to answer. The reason I overcame is because I chose not to defy myself. It is in my purity that I secure powers to bring down Babylon. Prayer. The church has not begun to understand prayer. You understand prayer? You meet Nehemiah and he tells you, when you are with a king, don't make any demand. 
even if you are dying of hunger die the only time you make a demand is when the nation is at stake then the king will take you serious because the king that you beg for food cannot answer you if you are making demand for a nation he knows you don't have such capacities but because you have not made a demand before anytime you ask about a nation that king will go out of his way to make it happen that kind of wisdom is not in the textbook you collide with men in the spirit to find them a generation of praying men must emerge there are heritages in the spirit that we have not accessed there are dimensions in god that we have not taught and the reason is because we are locked into instagram and tiktok wasting our time when the realms are inviting us they say come up here come up here i was in the spirit on the last day i heard a sound as of a trumpet and when i turned he said the gates of heaven opened and he entered that was when he saw the things that were immortal i saw 24 troops and upon them were 20 and 4 elders and they said every time him that sits upon the throne appears they fall on their faces and they said holy 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 is the lord all things were made for thy pleasure that was when he knew why creation was designed that creation is not for your welfare it's for his pleasure it's as you please him that your welfare is handled and so when he learned that secret he started pleasing god where there was no food he couldn't die of hunger he started pleasing god where there was no water he couldn't die of hunger because the moment you please god you qualify to exist those are secrets that are locked in the scrolls of heaven only men of prayer can go there i was in the spirit on the last day the burdens of revival the powers of revival are exercised on the altar when a generation begin to pray then they want to see the things bigger than them they want to touch the things that were written so that they become part of the witnesses of those realities you will not live here until you are made a witness uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey. <laughs> your truth you are your actions are your king God of oh, you are mighty on your When a man is having heart failure you have to introduce electricity the cardiac muscles need to be re-energized so you touch electricity and the heart jacks back it's when the heart jacks back that you can now begin to train the heart through exercise and food if you give food when the heart is suffering from cardiac arrest the person will die food can't solve the problem there so there is a level of attack that your soul comes under that requires energizing there's a level of attack that your body comes under that you require energizing the way god energizes us is that he releases the spirit again so that the wilderness can become a fruitful field and the fruitful field can become a forest and so i said a generation who understands the desperate need of revival will not just wait for periodic energizing they will keep pressing for it and the responsibility of pressing for revival is what we call the burdens of revival and one of those burdens is prayer so when we start praying we are praying because we know that even jesus at some point when jesus saw what he would undergo this is a man without sin 
he said the spirit is willing he said but the flesh is weak so you can get to that point where the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak so the responsibility every christian who wants the spirit so and body to operate as one must undertake his prayer because as you pray something happens i said number one when you start praying god sees you as a sacrifice because that is you coming to the altar that is why prayer happens on the altar the same way sacrifices happen on the altar when you start praying you become the sacrifice and every time god sees the sacrifice the fire will fall and i said when this fire falls you are not just kindled i said when this fire falls, even seasons can be changed that's the power of the outpouring he can change seasons he can reprogram seasons you know that one of the ways the devil attacks us is to eat our years the devil doesn't just attack bodies if the devil is attacking somebody's body it's because that person doesn't understand faith that person is still learning people who are masters in the realm what the devil attack is their years a demon can be sent to eat seven years of your life and so for those seven years you are laboring but you go nowhere you know how you will do it you will miss all your kairos season all the visitations that are meant for your promotion the devil will make you miss them and so the seven years of labor will be useless imagine you go to the farm you plant your your, your weed you irrigate but when harvest comes you are not around when the whole harvest is destroyed you come back in another farming season you farm you irrigate when harvest come you are not around so you are laboring but you will not eat of the labor because you have missed kairos season that's what the devil does and so when god wants to when god releases fire in addition to fire what happens is that he manipulates your seasons again so that the years that the kaka worm the palma worm the caterpillar worm have eaten all of that years come back that's why every revival comes with a bumper harvest look at the life of moses a servant he ran away from egypt out of fear of pharaoh and he encounters god the bible says moses came to the backside of the wilderness even horeb the mountain of god he saw a bush burning that was not consumed his life changed moses returns back to egypt and confronts pharaoh and said let my people go that they may serve me do you know who pharaoh is pharaoh is called the son god he was worshipped he was dreaded but a man met another god that no other god could match and suddenly pharaoh became a boy to him the reason earthly things are so big to you is because you have not seen him the bible said moses saw him that was invincible he showed up and told pharaoh let my people go and pharaoh will refuse and moses will look at him moses was threatening pharaoh moses will tell him by this time tomorrow so and so will happen and they will leave and he will go to god and speak and god will give him a word he will release it and then you will see frogs the the night will turn to, to blood the darkness will be so dark you can feel it and strange things were happening until the last time moses met pharaoh moses told a king who was called the son god you will not see me again in pharaoh's territory he told pharaoh you will not see me again and pharaoh thought it was a joke how can a man threaten a king so much you will not that means it's a privilege for me to appear before you because in exodus 7 verse 1 god told him i've made you a god unto pharaoh so he knew that pharaoh was not even comparing with his god he's bigger than pharaoh because of what he carried there's an understanding of what he carried meanwhile christ in you means nothing to you he said you will not see me again and he left that night pharaoh sent and said please go with all your people go with your cattle go with everything that you want and moses left you thought that was the miracle that's when the miracle began moses led over four million people out of egypt without any economic structure without any military or security structure without any administrative structure how will they survive what will they drink what will they eat and the first thing that happened was that in exodus 13 20 21 and 22 the bible says when they left the god that sent him didn't leave him behind he said the lord went with them he went before them as a pillar of fire by night and as a pillar of fire by day so the whole world was seeing the glory of god naked because of moses the whole world god they saw the glory the shekinah the whole world saw it imagine over four million people approaching your country and then you see something like a tornado moving in front of them leading them they didn't need a, a compass it was the glory that was leading them when it becomes night it turns to fire and when pharaoh saw it pharaoh thought it was a weather condition 
when Pharaoh began to chase him, the Bible said the glory departed from before them and went behind them and began to scrubble their wheels so they couldn't move fast. Moses came before a sea, there were no boats, no technology of boats that he could cross four million people. And he turned to God and said, God said, why do you call me? Go forward. And immediately he stretched forth his rod. And the Bible said with the blast of his nostrils, he parted the Red Sea. How can you imagine a sea suddenly dividing to two? And one side is standing like a wall of ice. Another one is standing. And they say, walk through it. The guy was not surprised. The guy was not afraid. Walk through it. And they walked through the sea as dry ground. They walked through a sea as dry ground you thought the miracle had finished and then suddenly they got to a place they needed water and they started troubling moses even moses was overwhelmed how can you be asking for water here and god said why are you worried talk to the rock the water will come out the guy was angry struck rock water came out and the water was bitter he went back to god and god said cut a branch of a tree throw it inside the water will become sweet is it god the man is communicating with like his friend is that is it god that a man is talking with as he went every step of the way and then I see I'm a Christian. I hear God once in three years. When they ask you, when was the last time God spoke to you? You can't even remember. Both when and the instruction, you have forgotten. But another person was talking to God every day. And the water became sweet. You now thought that was the miracle. They now discovered suddenly that their shoes were not growing old. They discovered that their clothes were not becoming weary. A boy of one year, a sandal is designed for him. He's 10 years old. The sandal grew with the leg. The shirt that he wore 10 years ago is as new as the day it was made because the presence that they carried was regulating everything including their wheels sander growing shoes growing clothes growing with them and you think that is a miracle he said there was no feeble among their tribe everybody was strong the only time they fell sick was when they rebelled and even when they rebelled moses knew what to do the bible said serpents came into their camp there were no doctors to help them and suddenly Moses prepares a brazen image and puts it up. If you are beating, look up. How does looking remove toxins from your blood? How does looking remove poison from your body? What is the relationship between looking and poison? That means there was something they knew in glory that we have not touched. Look up. That's all you need to do. A snake bites you, you look up and everything is healed. And you think that is the testimony. Every nation they enter, they conquered it. They didn't have bows. They didn't have arrows. All they had was the glory of God. And they entered the nation, those nations and shared the land. The men ran out and gave them the city. What did they carry? That Moses could command water to become sweet. Moses could, could, could carry so much presence that shoes grew with them. Clothes grew with them. Today, if three people are hungry, we are confused. What did they know about God? that we have not known even with the holy spirit and we brag about church we brag about title we brag about the seat we sit in church when men have touched powers even joshua that was moses's apprentice the bible said in joshua chapter 10 verse 12 that when nations came to fight them joshua divided the army and they fought he discovered that so long as it was day they were winning and joshua came up without consultation he said let the sun stand upon the mountains of ajalo who talks to sun he said let the moon remain upon the valley of gibeon and he said the sun did not make haste to go down and he said in the day that god hearkened to the voice of a man so god to hears men and obey because of intimacy what did they know that we don't know today if we want to cast out demon 30 intercessors we pray in tongues for seven hours if somebody has headache we will shout quote scriptures talk grammar at the end of the day the headache will remain there we say it's miracle service the three people that come to testify in order just to honor us somebody say pain i had pain on my neck i didn't sleep well i have pain on my back meanwhile even the testimony they are saying it to encourage us and you see the whole church trying to encourage man of god don't worry something is happening no no something is wrong something is wrong if the fathers have so much power that nature nature hope you know that the bible said the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god nature obeyed them in our world today when they have something to do either nationally or internationally they invite a bishop what does he come to do take opening prayer when you finish shut up you have no contribution allow those who can impact a nation to talk 
and we dress up and kit up to take opening prayer see a dimension of wisdom must come to us so that the kings of the world we know that when we are confused let's consult the bishops let's consult the prophet because that's the status quo do you know what happened in babylon when the king had a dream and he didn't know what to do he sent for the wise men and the prophet he's not technocrats that rule nation he's spiritual men because civilizations are built by spirits and when nobody knew what to do daniel showed up and said oh king give us time these things you are asking for is among the gods and the king gave him time and the bible said in daniel 2 18 that the secret was revealed to daniel in a night vision and when daniel spoke he brought an answer to the nation there is a wisdom that we have that the hope of nations rest upon us do you know why the nations are confused it's because we are not showing wisdom because it's not given to them to determine the direction of nation they don't have what it takes the confusion in nations are created by principalities and powers it's not a function of technocrats it's a function of spiritual men that is why we must ascend our throne of wisdom do you know the second time there was a challenge in the nation it was the queen that recommended daniel in daniel chapter 5 from verse 10 to verse 11 and 12 he said there's a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods he said light and understanding is in him and he has the ability to explain hard sentences look for that man he carries the answer a day will come and that day is now when governments economies media will say if you need an answer go to the church the church will no longer just be a religious ground the church will become the citadel of divine wisdom go and check most of the early inventions of the world they were found by christians some of them were priests some of them were tongue talkers go and read their history to the likes of michael faraday these were core christians speaking in tongues because when they pray they tap into inspirations those inspirations were the thing that led them to invention we have reduced christianity to a religion so we think when we come to church carry out ritual and go back to face real life that's not true your job there's a wisdom you can pick from the altar your nation there's a wisdom you can pick from the altar and when revival begins there is a baptism of wisdom when daniel showed up he didn't need to consult anybody a hand wrote on the wall nobody could read it so when there are situations where nations are confused that's when christians will shine he showed up he said oh king he said god gave you a kingdom that was eternal he blessed you with the abundance of the earth but you decided to worship the god of stone and iron he said that's the reason why this hand has come and what they couldn't read the first thing he did was to read it that's knowledge and he left there he now entered wisdom he now interpreted and applied it he said mene mene take care of us he said you have been weighed in the balances your kingdom has been divided among the medes and the patient tonight you shall be overthrown and what he said was like the law of god it happened exactly because revival is about divine wisdom wisdom that makes the church becomes the center point of reference in a civilization that is how we can lead a generation he said the house of the lord shall be upon the mountains of god and he said men of all nations isaiah 2 verse 2 micah 4 verse 1 shall say let us go to the house of the lord that we he may teach us his ways he said out of zion proceeds the lord a generation must be taught but for the generation to refer to us and to differ to us we must demonstrate a superior wisdom that makes us not to be seen as nuisance it's called revival and these were the things we were looking at in the afternoon but i told you at the anchor there must be the altar of prayer and that's why every generation that was relevant did business on the altar in genesis 4, 26 he said from the days of enosh he said men began to call upon the name of the lord when god wanted to change the story of abraham the bible said as abraham entered the nation genesis 12 6 he erected an altar as he entered bethel he erected an altar genesis 13 18 when he came to mamre he erected an altar because abraham knew that the secret is the altar not the tent he can pack up his tent but the altar is a memorial the altar can
cannot be removed. The altar occasions an open heaven. So much so that even if your descendant pass through that way, they can benefit from the altars of yesteryears. It was on the stones of Bethel that Jacob met the angel. It was on the stones of Bethel that the story of Jacob was saved. Because Abraham knew the secret that in order to trap a heritage that is divine, an altar must be erected. It's the way of the fathers. It's a secret that they understand. And it's because of altars that they are so powerful. An elder will look at you and say, come, I will tell you the things that will be before you. Because he knows the power he has with God. Isaac said, go and get for me a savory venison and I will bless you. What do you mean by that? Don't you know there is such a thing called inflation and deflation? Don't you know there's such a thing called government of nation? It doesn't matter anywhere you go to. When this man opened your heaven, every nation will receive you. He said, I bless you with corn and wine. He was not talking agriculture. He was talking from a throne because the altar is a throne. I bless you with corn and wine. He said, I bless you with the dew of heaven. Who who told you you have powers in heaven? Huh? Who told you that a man can 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 apportion the dew of heaven to another? I bless you with the dew of heaven. And true to his word, the guy went to the house of Laban. Laban tried to deceive him ten times, but the guy could not diminish. The more you cheat him, the bigger he becomes. The more you swindle him, the bigger he becomes. And a point came, Laban said, I have come to understand by divination that God has blessed me because of you. I'm not blessed because I'm wise. I'm blessed because you are here. But that power came because somebody spoke from the altar. And so when Jacob knew the secret, he too became a man of the altar. And when Jacob became old, he said, gather around me, you sons of Jacob. I will tell you the things that will befall you. And he looked at Judah. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. Neither will the Lord give her depart from him between his feet. How can you make a man a king when you didn't consult anybody you only spoke from your throne and even jesus had to come from the lineage of judah because jacob said it and as he said it he became a law in the spirit he looked at god he said the truth overtake you and many years later we heard of the madman of gadara that was overtaken by a truth because he altered it it has become a law in the spirit what kind of power did they have they knew the secrets of altars that's why anywhere they go god visits the land they knew the powers. Our generation is a prayerless but talking generation. That's why we talk and we end up in ridicule and reproach. When a generation of praying men rises again, that power will return. seasons that must change there are transfigurations that must take place there are powers that must be inherited no wonder Paul said I thank my God not because I have a title I thank my God not because I have human connection he said I thank my God because I pray in tongues more than you all because the man who prays has everything I told you when you are looking for something even if nobody in your generation has it pray you can bring somebody from a generation that have passed to bring that into you. The Bible said in Matthew 17 verse 2, it said as Jesus was praying, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister and he said they stood with him, Moses and Elijah. If you need a dimension that nobody has in Ghana, it's not lost, it's somewhere in the spirit. As you pray, the spirit realm will align its algorithm until that thing finds you. It's only in time that things are lost. It's only in time that things pass. There's no past in the, in the spirit realm. There's no future in the spirit realm. It's a perpetual continuum. Everything is now. 
and as you begin to pray a time comes when that realm envelops you and what was can become what is what is to come can become what is the future and the past can meet you in one location this is why men who pray are ahead of their generation because they they meet where everything congregates i speak over someone tonight your superior dimension will emerge from this retreat There was a day I was praying and the Lord began to speak to me. He said, some of the things I want to do with you, you are too young. He's supposed to meet you in another five years. He said, but it's your choice. If he can't meet you, meet it. Hey. If you enter that realm, you will see things that you can't even explain with drugs. I'm telling you, as you begin to press, you can start living from 2030 in 2023. And the things you are touching, the things you are printing, men will look at you and say, how do you come about this thing? You are living the future in the present. That's the reality of the altar. Because the realm is one. You fetch from the future. You spend it in the now. And people cannot understand why the things happening with you are happening with you. It's because when you go to the altar, your goal is not time. It's to travel. It's to travel. And sometimes you travel and you collide with men. And a prophet that lives in the last dispensation begin to advise you and tell you this level of authority you don't need to talk much because it's not the devil you will fight here at this level it's your error that can pull you down nobody taught you you didn't read it anywhere but you met somebody that has ascended that height before and he told you the battles he contended with so you start watching your words and people are saying you are wise you are not wise you heard something you went somewhere and so it is the counsel that you receive that is regulating you you don't know you can pray and you meet Daniel in the spirit and he tells you when you are a prophet and you start working with presidents be careful and he begins to tell you the battles that prophets who interact with presidents face you will not find it in the book but it's in the spirit and so the reason you will not allow yourself to be defied is because Daniel told you that if you are defied the 